Hello, hello. Hey guys, look at that ancient landmark over there. I want to move it somewhere else. I want it over here. I think it would be better Let's put it in the its original place. Best left where they are. I shall not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, to the right hand or to the left, to go after and for God to serve them. Amen.
and thou shalt not be beneath, if thou hearken unto the commandment which I have given thee this day. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayst observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant wherever thou goest. All these blessings will follow you if you do not remove the ancient landmarks. I'm sure we, we, <clears throat> we had a good time, didn't we? And joined the children. Um, we've got about 20 minutes to 11. It's time when, as the Lord leads us, I'm sure a lot of us would like to pray. Some of us may like a little bit of recess, which we can do. But um, as the Bible says, my house shall be called a house of prayer. I'm sure as we go on our knees and, and pray, the Lord will bless this morning's service. We're trusting the Lord for a great, great time in his presence this morning. Okay, so... Shall we go on our knees? Thank you. God bless you.
Now welcome to our concluding meeting for this Cameroon 2017. May the Lord bless each and every one of you for coming. Amen. And for those of you on the um, web that you have been following us, we appreciate your decision to look this way, to be part of this committee. The Lord has blessed us abundantly, Amen. beyond our expectation, for which we are very, very grateful. Uh, the Cameroon is concluding with this uh, devotional service uh, this morning. Um, we, of course, listen to the holy, holy, holy from the orchestra. They will now continue with orchestration, come Lord Jesus. At the end of that, they will do exceeding glad, combined choir, and then a quartet, holy be thy name.
open to SSNS number 533, Secret Sons and Solos 533, Tenderly Guide Us, O Shepherd of Love, guiding us ever by night and by day. Once again, this is the concluding meeting for our camp 2017. We want to thank God for what he has done. And of course, we are still expecting him to visit us in a special way, even during this last meeting. And it is the prayer of our heart that as we all go to our various stations and locations, that he will continue to tenderly guide us. So we're going to take verses 1 and three, verses one and Function that decision in heaven. Amen. Hymn number one from the same hymn book. Number one, the Lord is worthy of our praise Amen. and thanksgiving. We're just going to take these two, uh, two verses of number one. Praise my soul, the King of heaven. The orchestra player will join us. Um, we just listen to the tune from the uh, keyboard players and we just sing together a grand choir. For those two verses again sitting down. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven.
May you please accept all our praise and thanks. Our song before prayer will be from the same hymn book, 524. 524. Guide me. Guide us. O thou great Jehovah. When we tread the verge of Jordan, he bid our anxious fears subside. He bear us through the swelling current and land us all at last on Canaan side. In the name of Jesus. We're going to sing the third verse of that song. This is one and two sitting down, the third verse. We're going to stand up to sing at the end of which Brother Shodipi will come forward to lead us in congregational prayer. Five, two, four. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. we thank you. Thank you for all the blessings you have given us since we have started this uh, camp meeting. The blessings of salvation, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost, healing, and many more that you have given us and more that you will give us even now. Glory be to your name. Lord, guide us. Go with us, O Lord. Help us to shine for you so that next time we come, we will bring more souls. We know you are more than equal. You can do exceedingly above and beyond what we can ever think or ask because we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Once again, we like to say thank you to all of you for your support and your um, effort in partaking of this special feast of the Kemiri. God bless you all. For our internet audience, we pray that the same Lord who is here with us, we bless you wherever you are. And as I've mentioned, this will be the last meeting at um, Kefni Lee Park, where we are renting as a facility for this Kemiri, as all of us will be departing for our various locations um, from this um, afternoon. 
all our schedules then will resume as normal at all our various branches. Um, for the next two weeks, we are not going to have any midweek meetings, except, of course, on Fridays when we shall have our usual uh, prayer meeting at all our branches at the usual time. But the weeknight activities of Bible study um, will not resume until after two weeks um, from now. So for, for us in, in London, um, particularly, we're going to have our prayer meeting on Friday between the hour of 8 and 9, then on Sunday, Sunday school at 9.30, devotional service at 11, young people's activities at 2.30, and then the evening being the first Sunday of the, um, of the month. It is our usual practice that the first Sunday of the month, we, instead of our revival service, we have a prayer meeting, which will be from 4 to 6 p.m. Um, um, in those regards. But for other branches and stations, uh, I'm sure all the um, times and what you normally do will be communicated to you by your pastor or your um, group leader um, accordingly. Few, few items here to announce to you. There are so many unclaimed, lost and found items. Um, we usually have this every year, so they are saying that please don't leave all this again with us this year. So and can I then use that to advise that when we pack, let's be sure we pack everything. When we miss on, out on anything, let's take the time to look around for that thing. And um, we just pray that God will help you to find whatever you have lost. Call at the camp office for further information about this. Um, pack lunch will be available from about 12.30. And I don't want to... Um, we wouldn't want the enemy to gain advantage of the last meeting or when we are all leaving as if, you know, we are just here to do something quick, quick and rush out. There is no reason to do that. I have checked from all the pastors and um, some of the pastors, I couldn't get all of them, and um, group leaders, in terms of your coach departure, we have enough time. We, we, we all have enough time to be able to follow through the last service and pray very well. There must have been a reason when Jesus Christ on the last day of the feast was asking, is there still anyone that is thirsty, that is hungry? And it's the same thing I believe we can do today. Yeah. If you still have thirsty souls, hungry hearts, the Lord is going to answer their prayers. Yeah. So instead of using the gap in between the end of the service and the time of your coach departure to be playing around, and I'm not against that, all I'm encouraging you to do is to take time to pray. Of course, there will be many things moving here and there. The, the last thing that we are going to touch will be these altar benches. Let those who are still seeking at the end of the service take time to come to these altar benches and pray until you have something in your heart from heaven that the Lord has answered your prayers. So please, don't, don't, there's no need for us to, to rush. The AV will want me to let you know that if you want CD of the proceedings of this convention that you like to be playing in your car other than the um, a DVD, uh, you can see them and um, proper arrangement can be made about that. Um, the arrangement about park lunch, take one. Don't take two, please. Take one and, um, so that we, we have enough for um, everybody. When the time comes for the parking up and down, please um, be of help. If you have finished praying and with the ushers, with the audiovisual, we need to get this place back to normal. But please, that doesn't mean that you should not pray. But if you have finished praying and you want to find something to do, report to the ushers um, corner there and the AV, there will be one thing or the other to help to, to park. <clears throat> Okay, once again, I'd just like to say thank you to Brother Daryl and Sister Debbie, as well as all the ministers, all the workers, everyone that has taken part in contributing to the success of this camp meeting. May the Lord bless all of you. Amen. We're going to listen now to the first special, Raise Up and I mean, at the end of which Brother Bessie will come forward to give us the Bible reading, and then the last uh, special, Roll Back the Curtain, and at the end of that, we have but that thou has to give us the word of the Lord.
16 to 22. Mark chapter 1, verses 16 to 22. Now as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. And straight away they forsook their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little further thence, he saw James the son of Zebedee and John his brother who also were in the ship, mending their nets. And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. 
And when they came into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. Me from and 
forget. So remind me. So remind us. Remind me again. We'll take our text from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 1, verse 1. But before I read it, we want to uh, thank you for the hospitality that you've extended to uh, Debbie and me. We've had a memorable camp meeting. We've enjoyed it very, very much. We, we have one regret, and that is I missed out on a blessing of waiting on the tables after the meals. We weren't... I didn't hear the Americans noted as one of the teams to clean, clean up afterward. So uh, maybe next time. <laughs> Mark 1.1 1, 1 says simply the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Yeah. If we ask the four writers about the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, we would get four different responses. Matthew's gospel starts out this way, the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. So to Matthew, he hearkens back past David to Abraham, who was called out of the Ur, uh, Ur of the Chaldees. If we ask Luke, he has a different uh, perspective. We, we read of his genealogy as well, where he says, and Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph, the son of Helal, the son of Matat, who was the son of Levi, and he continues on through the generations, finally getting to, uh, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. So to Luke, he felt we must hearken all the way back to Adam to understand the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. John had a different view. He simply starts out his book, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. Mark starts differently. He has a different approach. He says simply the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the, the son of God. He, he does not mention uh, David or Abraham uh, or Adam nor does he mention creation. He says simply the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and then begins to uh, tell as you, as you go through his uh, gospel the things that Jesus did. More than the other writers who emphasize a lot of the things that Jesus said, for example, parables and his sayings, Mark did some of that, but his emphasis was on the things that Jesus did. And specifically, the things that Jesus did in the hearts of men and women. We, we hear that in, in the scripture reading, where uh, we, we see that Jesus, what, what he did was he permanently altered the lives of men and women, yeah. of individuals. Yeah. Perhaps... Uh, to some, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, of the Son of God, was when John the Baptist came preaching, which Mark also refers to. This man came preaching like no one had ever preached. And the countryside was filled with those who came out from uh, the cities to hear John the Baptist preach. And they came out, the Bible says in, in Mark's gospel, confessing their sins. There was something about his preaching that struck a chord in the hearts of those who were not living right. right. And they uh, spontaneously began to confess their sins. And actually, John the Baptist required it. 
He required, in order to baptize individuals, that they confess their sins and forsake them. The Pharisees and scribes and some came out to, be, uh, to hear him, and he uh, challenged them, uh, Who hath warned you to flee from the wrath which is to come? Bring forth fruit, meat for repentance. You cannot expect to, to be ready uh, for the one who is coming after me, he said, if you have not prepared the way for him to come into your heart. If we were to ask the four fishermen who we heard about in the scripture reading, what is the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ for you? I don't think they, they would have hearkened back either to Adam or to creation. They would have hearkened back to the day when they were fishing. And here comes this Jesus walking along the Sea of Galilee, seeing Simon, Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea. This is what they did. They were fishermen. And they, somehow he captured their attention. That's what the Lord does. He captures our attention. That's the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is when he captures our hearts, when he captures our attention. He did that to Simon and to Andrew, and he said, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And these two fishermen left their livelihood and began to follow Jesus. Right. Their, their lives were changed. And we see this uh, expanded upon in Luke's gospel where uh, uh, Peter was out fishing and had toiled all night and caught nothing. Jesus said, cast your nets on the right side of, of the fish or, or of the boat. Now, he was a fisherman. Who was this uh, carpenter coming along telling the fishermen how to fish? If he wanted advice uh, how to build a bench or how to build a, a, a brick wall, yeah. then uh, I, we would consult with Jesus. But this Jesus wa was no fisherman. What uh, Peter did not know at that time is that this uh, carpenter had created the fish. This carpenter had put the instincts into the fish to go to the net or to the bait. So Peter, who had been toiling all night, said, well, uh, I'll do it at your will. And he brought in uh, so many fish that the net break. And he uh, realized that this was not just any man. This was the Son of God. And he said, depart from me, uh, for I'm a sinful man. He confessed his sins. So you want to know when the, the uh, if you ask Peter, when is the beginning of the gospel of, of Jesus Christ, the Son of God? He would say, that day on the shores of Galilee, when I confessed my sins and my life was changed forever. That, that's what the Lord uh, tries to do to human hearts, even today. Sinners go through life toiling and coming up empty. But the Lord uh, challenges us to try something new. Oh, yeah. Try Jesus. Oh, yeah. He will satisfy your heart. Oh, yeah. the, the enemy makes promises that he cannot and does not fulfill. He leaves us empty and leaves us toiling still. But if we uh, begin to confess our sins, that will be the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. It struck me as ironic that we would be talking about the beginning at the end of this camp meeting. But there could be someone here for whom the gospel of Jesus Christ has not yet begun. The Lord wants to give you a beginning Amen. at the end. Amen. It can be your beginning. Yes. And years from now, if the Lord tarries, you will hearken back to the end uh -huh. of camp meeting and say, that was the beginning Amen. for me. Amen. That was the beginning for Simon and for Andrew. He went along and uh, these had, they forsook their nets. And he found then next James and John, the sons of Zebedee. They, they were alongside their ship, mending their nets in preparation for going out and doing some more fishing. And straightway, he called them. And they left Zebedee, their father, and began to follow Jesus. Right. Zebedee, their father, must have been uh, standing by as they were mending the nets and, and then suddenly walking away, scratching his head and saying, Where are you going, boys? Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> Sorry, Dad, we're following Jesus. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is a beginning for us. And they began to follow the Lord. And upon uh, those four, the, uh, the apostleship 
was beginning to form. Well, they, they went from there. And if we would have kept reading the scripture uh, reading, we would have seen in verse 21, they uh, went into Capernaum and straightway on the Sabbath day entered into the synagogue. They, they went. So the five of them. Well, anytime you have a, a small group of people worshiping together and you have five people walk in that perhaps you are not familiar with, you, you, uh, that would create a bit of a, a excitement. Here are these five, four fishermen and a carpenter. Well, we, we see as they uh, go in that synagogue and taught uh, that Jesus stood up and taught, and he taught like no one had ever taught before. Uh, they were amazed at him. Well, in that synagogue, in that church service, there was a man with an unclean spirit. And if you were to ask that man later on, what is the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God? He would say, well, one day I, I was sitting in a church service. And in that church service I walked four a fisherman and a carpenter. But this carpenter was not just a carpenter. He was a public speaker like you have never heard before. Uh, he began to preach a common sense gospel. Well, I was tormented by a devil that had plagued me for years. An unclean spirit. What, what is an unclean spirit? But well, I suppose it's a, it's a spirit that makes you do unclean things, right. defiled things, right. sinful things. Right. But in, in that service, uh, something in this man cried out, uh, the devil within him cried out, What have I to do with thee, uh, Jesus, thou son of, uh, Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? And he acknowledged him as being the Holy One of God. When this devil recognized what many around could not see, this was... Uh, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And Jesus commanded the Spirit, come out of him. And the man was a new creature in Christ Jesus. That was the beginning for him. So for you, it isn't, it isn't creation. That's important. We're not uh, discounting that. Or Adam, we're all the sons and daughters of Adam's race. Or Abraham, uh, who was uh, a, a, a son of Eber, from which we get Hebrew from whom the God's chosen people emerged. But for you and for me, it is the day we encounter Jesus ourselves. That's the beginning for us. We thank God uh, that even in this meeting today, the, the showers that we hear coming down outside can be showers of blessing inside. It's not sufficient for us to go through a, a camp meeting and have not encountered Jesus. We do not want to get to the end and have never had a beginning. You need a beginning. And the Lord is offering that to you today. Well, they went from the synagogue. And there they went into the house of, of uh, Peter's mother-in-law. Now, if you were to ask Peter's mother-in-law, what's the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, for you? Well, she says, I, I was home. I was sick. The others went to church. The, the house was, was busy and, and a lot of activity. I was so glad when they all just left because I was not feeling well and I could lay down yeah. and take a nap and yeah. take care of myself and wait this thing out until maybe I would get better in a day or two or in a week or two or, or whatever. But that day after church, these five came in yeah. and they were excited. They said, you should have been in church today. There was that man that you knew who had an unclean spirit. Uh, Jesus cast that spirit out of him, and he has had a beginning in Christ. Well, this woman, uh, she was sick, and, but the, the Lord was there to give her a beginning. They prayed over her, or somehow, some way, Jesus spoke the word, and the disease fled, and she was well. She got up and began to wait on them. So for her, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was that day yeah. after church yeah. when she was at home and they came and she experienced Jesus herself. Yeah. You know, the Lord wants to give you a beginning. Yeah. My beginning was when I was 21. Usually well, we think of our beginning as the day of our birth. But our beginning is the day of our second birth. Oh, yes. When we heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. I heard it in that very uh, first day I was in an apostolic faith meeting. Then later that evening, I prayed through and God saved my soul. Yeah. That's the beginning. Yes. No, nothing's been the same since. It's different for everyone. My dad, uh, about a year later, uh, who was 49 years old, he knelt in church and prayed and God saved his soul. Yeah. 
49 years old. Well, a few years later, after Debbie and I were married and had two children, our four-year-old son uh, came to me after church, at home, and asked if, if we were all saved. And we had a short conversation, and, and I finally asked him, well, Randy, are you saved? And he began to weep and cry and said, no, I'm not saved. And by the bedside there, we prayed. He shed tears as if he was a horrible sinner, invited Jesus into his heart, and that was his beginning. Amen. He was saved, 21, 49, 4, however old you are, your age. It's the beginning. It's a start. That's what the Lord is extending to you uh, today. You, you will wonder, well, well, how long did it take? How long did it take? How long did it take the thief on the cross to have a beginning right at the end of his life? Jesus spoke the word, this day thou shalt be with me in paradise. How long did it take for the Philippian jailer uh, who uh, was, was uh, in that dark uh, dungeon of a place pretending to be free because he was in charge of all the, the jailers, but he was as captive as they were. But he heard the gospel and prayed, and in a moment of time, Amen. he had a beginning. Amen. You can pray through and get saved in shorter time than it would take you to leave this chapel and go to your coach. One prayer. Yeah. One prayer that says, God, give me a beginning. Yeah. I want to look back at the end and be able to say, that was my beginning. Yeah. It's for you today. The gospel, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Our prayer is that somebody gets started today. Yeah. It doesn't take long. You just come to the place of prayer. Say, I'm a sinner. I want a beginning. I want to serve you. God will hear your prayer from heaven. He will answer. He will give you victory today. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. We thank you, God, for we know someone has to have a beginning today. We, we know that you do it, oh God. There are many that have come to these altars to pray, and we pray that you save souls, pray that you sanctify them, pray that you fill with the Holy Ghost and fire and heal the sick, oh Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.